David, thank Hi. you so much for joining me on Yapcast ECC special. So happy to have you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So David, do you want to tell me a little bit about your background, like what you do, as well sure. as you know what you're you know uh, building with Flowdesk? Yeah. Sure. Sure. So my name is David. I'm. Uh, I live in Singapore for the last ten years. Um, mm. I'm always been uh, throughout my whole career. I've been working uh, towards fixing inefficiencies in the trading activity. Right. Uh, so I started as a trader for about 10 years in uh, traditional banks, uh, HSBC and BNP Paribas mostly, uh, in different locations. So I started in Korea and then I went to Hong Kong and to Singapore yeah. and London. Um, so I did that for, for a long time. And then for the last 10 years, I've been involved in the market as an entrepreneur, a FinTech entrepreneur. So I built the first company. Uh, called Capital Lab that was um, exited a, a couple of years ago. I did that for eight years. It's a company that is optimizing the derivatives for the large banks, so very niche markets. Um, and when I exited, I joined uh, Flowdesk for, uh, to fix another inefficiency, which is the market making, the liquidity in the uh, crypto space. Wow, that's uh, a lot of uh, to do with the, you know, trading world yes exactly like, yeah. Yeah. always uh, always revolving around trading trading infrastructures and yeah. trading tools so this uh podcast series about the story of money yeah. and uh you know if we're gonna take you know a few steps back from the crypto industry and talk about trading in tech uh, i want to ask you a philosophical question but what is money to you well it's a big question yeah. uh, money <laughs> is a the vast topic it's a, one of the central pillar of our civilization whether we like it or not yeah. it's, it's, it's here and yeah. we have to deal around it, right? So um, one way and what motivated me, I think, throughout my journey, whether it's for banks or for the digital assets, is how can we make it uh, fairer, you know, more transparent, more distributed yeah. um, and, and more efficient in a way. Yeah. So, so I'll give you an example, a very simple example where we think crypto can improve things is uh, to transfer money. We all experience, especially as we live abroad, uh, we all experience a very long journey of money. When you send US dollar from a bank in Singapore to yep. a bank in, uh, in France, it goes through intermediate bank, it's very expensive, it's very slow. And sometimes you don't know where the money is, which is crazy if you think about it. Um, so crypto is answering part of that. Yeah. I mean, coming from a traditional trading world, yep. you know, uh, when did you first learn about crypto? Like, how did you get interested in it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I got into crypto in 2017. So not too early from my, um, yes, yeah. But 2017, and I, I went into it just before the bull market uh, by reading the Bitcoin um, white paper. Very, very simply, I read it. And then I and did a course. And what for you? But the, 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 the concept, I think for me, it was like a revolution, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I know everybody is saying that, but it's yeah. kind of true. This is why it's so powerful, I guess. And uh, then I did a course on Coursera uh, from, I think it was Princeton University on Bitcoin. Uh, very, very good uh, course that I highly recommend. And uh, yeah, it was very eye-opener on the technology of blockchain, yeah. uh, distributed and how it's validated and the permissionless and correct, very good. What revolutionary kind of uh, concept did, like, how did the introduction of crypto, uh, how has it changed money and where money is heading? So I think it's still very early days, right? At the moment, it didn't really change money, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. It's very, very small. It's still very nascent. You can see in this conference, there is a lot happening, but at the same time, uh, it's still very, very small. So we have to be uh, very humble, I think, compared to money, right? Compared to central bank, compared to the world of money, it's, it's, um, it's a factor, you know, it's multiple factor, bigger and stronger and more than crypto. But crypto, the way it can be, you know, there, there are some very simple use case, like sending money, very simply, right? If you send a, a, a token from a place A to a place B, cross border, without all the heaviness of uh, uh, too much regulation, too much control and inefficiencies. That's a simple use case. Of course, you, the, big, the big problem is to face as a competitor, I would say the central bank and the government. This is, this is a tricky part, right? So, but I think everybody's coming to the same direction and over the years we will see um, a shared interest to equip the world with you know, digital assets including uh, from central banks. Yeah. 
Well, looking ahead, like you make good point that it's actually still early and it's actually refreshing to hear that because, you know, there's a lot of talk about what this could do for money. But mm -hmm. we're looking ahead like five years from now with what maybe Flowdesk is building this, you know, infrastructure for yeah. you know crypto money. Uh, crypto market making um as well as uh yeah you said that the whole growth of the digital asset industry where do you think money can be in five years from now so one thing that we think will happen and we are building infrastructure and technology and services around that belief mm -hmm. is the tokenization of securities and tokenization of uh, real world assets so we see a lot of value in that uh, so same thing as there are some very uh, classic and very uh, uh, illustrative examples. For example, if you want to own a piece of a penthouse in New York, yeah. uh, today if you are average median salary in Paris, you can't buy this, right? Uh, maybe when it's tokenized, you can fractionalize the tokens and get a little bit of it. So that, that's a big change in uh, ownership and asset. But now the question is not really the technology around that, it's uh, the legal issue, right? What rights does it give you to own a share of a penthouse in New York? So I think, you know, we, we can see the technology is here and a lot, everything is evolving around it. But the biggest topic for me is legal. The yeah. legal difficulties are huge and there is a lot of things to, to master around it. So five years from now, we see a tremendous growth opportunity um, in the digital asset space when it comes to tokenization of securities. Yeah. You know, why? Can I only buy Apple stock from nine to five US time? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, can we not make it more efficient? Can we not mimic what happened in crypto? Yeah, so making it more efficient in terms of, I mean, with legal comes regulation, and yeah. I know Flowdesk has been quite, you know, um, on top of like keeping up with, you know, uh, what regulators are doing. Yeah. Can you shed some light on yes, what you guys yes, are aware yes, yes. of? Yes, yes, yes. So we have always put uh, compliance and regulation at the, one of the core pillar of the company. Yeah. Because coming from uh, traditional finance, you know, we know where the market is going. There is no, there is no way around it. You need to be clean. You need to be uh, not doing stupid things. You need to control what people are doing, insider trading, spoofing, false, uh, uh, you know, uh, ins yeah. Um, especially in market making, there is a lot of uh, fake activity and uh, conflict of interest, etc. So all of this, we put it really as a value to not touch it, to be regulated, and we come forward to all the regulators in every jurisdiction we go to, whether it's Singapore or France or Europe or the US. And we say, okay, this is what we are doing. And, and, um, and we, we apply strict rules. We lose some business because of that, but at least we, we are building for the, for the long run. It's good to see you guys take that grounded perspective, like proactively yeah. building something innovative, but still doing it considerably. Um, and last question, you know, what's been your impression of uh, ECC6 so far? I mean, yeah. Yeah, so look, it's very, very big. Uh, I've been there um, the last two years as well, and it's growing. It's very, it's very vibrant. It's. Um, what do you think it says about the industry? You know, I think it's in a good stuff. state. Uh, it's quite, it's still very young, but it's quite amazing to see all these people outside the conference. You know, yesterday I was in a, on a key around along the Seine River, and there was like hundreds of people talking about decentralization mm -hmm. and exchanges, and it's like, wow, it's quite, it's quite remarkable. Yeah. So there is, at the same time, it's very nascent, but at the same time, you have all this energy and all this capital that is at stake working in this industry to build the future, and it's quite impressive. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, myself, I'm very convinced, uh, you know, things are happening. Now the pace is, uh, is slower than we all like, but, uh, you know, it's <laughs> happening. And it's quite exciting to see the attendance, the vibe, the energy is big. It's quite good. Yeah. Yeah, this is just the beginning. It's still early days, so yeah, yeah it's exciting. Yeah, and we see more and more, uh, you know, professional minds come into the space mm -hmm. with um, smart money. I would say. And, yeah, there's and more and more people here. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and Paris is, uh, is having a good place, right? It's a good place. It's Beautiful. a nice place. Beautiful city. <laughs> well, David, thank you so much for thank your you. time. Thank you. Thanks for thank joining you us on Yavcast. Thank you. Cool.